Uh, Experiment 3.1, Vector Components, Apology of Physics, 2nd Edition, page 80 and 81. Um, supply safety goggles, modeling clay, a pencil, at, le at least 6 inches long, a wooden ruler, it needs to be flat at the 0 inches, a plain 8.5 inch by 11 inch sheet of paper, a pen, and a protractor. All right, now that we have everything gathered, take a few minutes and put together what you think your data page should look like, keeping in mind as you read through the experiment what data and measurements you have to take. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the lab. Number one, measure the length of the pencil from the end of the eraser to the tip of the pencil's point. It is precisely seven and just over a quarter inches. All right, so we will say what, 7.25? Perfect. 7.25 inches. All right. That was step one. Step two, place the piece of paper on a flat surface. Make a lump of modeling clay and place it on the paper. Stick the eraser end of the pencil into the lump of clay. I drew that because I feel like for this experiment it might be helpful. So we have our lump of clay here and then we have the eraser tip here. All right. So stick the eraser end of the pencil into the lump of, play, of clay. The pencil should be at an angle and the top of the eraser should protrude out the back of the lump while most of the pencil sticks out of the other side. So we have an angle here. We have our eraser here and we have our lump of clay. Make a mark to indicate where the end of the eraser touches the paper. So the eraser where it touches. Yep. Work with the clay so that the pencil remains pointing up at an angle even when you let go of it. Place the ruler upright so that its end at zero inches is flat against the paper. Move the ruler so it is very close to the point of the pencil. It should not actually touch the pencil because that will move the pencil. Just get as close as possible without actually touching it. And in the end, your setup will look something like this. Keep the end of the ruler flat against the paper. You're doing great. So that there is a 90 degree angle. So the 90 degree angle is pretty much gonna be right here, a right angle between the paper and the ruler. Record the mark on the ruler at which the pencil is pointing. 2.25 inches. All right. So as long as the ruler makes a 90 degree angle with the paper, which we think it does pretty close, this is the height of the angled pencil. Use the pen to mark where the face of the ruler touches the paper. Now measure the distance between that mark and the mark that indicates where the eraser end touches the paper. So this distance from that, yep. So that distance. Got the length to be 7.10 inches. Use the protractor to measure the angle at which the pencil is pointing. This was trickier, but we figured, we took a guess and, a, and kind of decided that it was 15 degrees, somewhere around 15 degrees. Well, what do we have here? The pencil represents a vector. Its length is the magnitude of the vector, and the angle you measured in the previous step is the direction of the vector. In step 10, you measured the vertical distance spanned by the vector. That's its y component. So its y component was this height which was 2.25 inches. In step 12, you measure the horizontal distance spanned by the vector. So from the tip of the pencil to where it touched, almost touched the ruler was 7.10 inches. That's its X component. Use equation 3.2 and the two components you measure to calculate the magnitude of the vector. 
All right. So in our right triangle, we have a sub x and a sub y. The magnitude is a sub x squared plus a sub y squared. You get 7.45 inches after you do all the math and keeping in mind the significant figures. So the actual length, it says here, to compare the result to the length of the pencil. The actual length of the pencil was 7.25 inches, so we were relatively close. Use equation 3.3 and the two components you measured to calculate the angle at which the vector points. Compare that to the angle you measured with your protractor. All right, so we had theta, the angle, this angle, being the inverse tangent of a sub y over a sub x, and after you do the math, you get the um, calculated angle as 17.6 degrees. And our actual angle that we think we measured was around 15 degrees. So once again, it was fairly accurate. All right, you have to duplicate this whole experiment one, uh, one more time with a different angle. 